welcome back to Player 2's Video Games Club, our March 2016 edition. I'm Paul James, and this month I got to select the game for Jay and Damo to play, and my choice was the critically acclaimed SteamWorld Dig. SteamWorld Dig is a quirky little game that basically successfully manages to merge 2D platforming with resource management. It requires a lot of smarts, care, and patience in order to really truly succeed. The game was available on a myriad of different platforms, from PC through to the handhelds, but is actually a sequel to the DSi, little known DSiWare game, SteamWorld Tower Defense. Um, released in 2013, SteamWorld Dig has randomized minds, death penalties, and a quirky sense of humor that wasn't really seen too much in the indie platform as of that stage. Um, it's now quite proliferated and quite common, but SteamWorld Dig was really a pioneer and was really, really well received when it first released. Um, it was a great pleasure to be able to bring the game to both Jay and Damo this month, who both heard about the game but had never had a chance to play it themselves. Um, I'm excited for you guys to get your hands on it and play the game yourself. It's a really affordable title. Uh, and personally, look, you'll knock it over in about six to eight hours. I got the pleasure of playing it while on a flight, an overseas flight that lasted about eight hours, and it was a single solid session that I just enjoyed from start to finish because of all the things I listed before. There's an incredible depth to the game, but there's also a great sense of humour, and it comes together in an amazing package. So sit back, enjoy this episode, see what the boys have to say, and let us know what you think. Um, maybe go pick it up yourself, and we look forward to hearing from you. See you later. Welcome to Player 2's Video Games Club for the month of March. My name's Paul James. Today I'm joined by Jay Parnas. Good to see you again. Damo Camilleri. Hey. And this month was actually my choice. The game we picked for the month was SteamWorld Dig. Um, I guess first up, you, we've all played it. What did you guys play it on? Uh, I played it on Steam, so through my PC. Yeah, Steam on a controller. And I played it on the PS Vita um, across the course of an eight hour flight. So, um, first up, might dive into a little bit of story related things. What, what, was, what do we think of the general premise of the game? Um. Look, the story, I mean, it has one, I guess. Um, it's not a, look, I wouldn't call it a very strong story. Um, it leaves a lot, um, it, le it leaves a lot of the story out. Like, there's just not very much of it there. It's very bare bones, if that makes sense. Yep. Um, I don't know, what did, what did you think of the story? Oh, no, I'd agree. There wasn't a hell of a lot of the story there. Like, it was just a... A bare bones enough that it kind of scaffolded the the action itself. Did it just did it feel compelling to you? I was I was no, not particularly. That's no, fine. By the story. General idea is that you've kind of adopted a farm after your your mind, isn't no, it? Mine, sorry, not, uh, not a farm. I'm thinking too much of Harvest Moon. Yeah. Um, yes. Uh, <laughs> you adopted a mine after the death and, yeah. of your uncle or father. Yeah, uncle. Uh, it was your uncle. Um, and then from there, that just kind of you then set upon a little trick of just kind of fleshing it all out and building it out and Correct. kind of reviving the town along the way. Um, so there wasn't really much of one, but it was enough that kind of gave reason to what you were doing. Damo, what do you think of it? I don't know. I thought it had a good concept at the beginning when you know it's like, oh yeah, uncle's dead, like a you know, fart, it's like a, a, a mine. Story. Like so you know, done. I'm like, oh, this is kind of kind of cool. Like it seems. Strange, like you know, I wonder what's gonna be in the mine, like in the storyline, like kind of thing. And then I don't know, it just kind of fades, like that didn't yes. go anywhere from that. Like it just kind of went, yeah, until it kind of just reemerges at the very end. We won't spoil any of that, but yeah, it just kind of pops up right at the very end. It does oh, this, this, I mean, this, I, this, it, okay, it cool, does done, like there, over. there, there are things that happen, yes, but I. With the previous story, because I mean that's that's the thing. So the the idea is that it's like frontier type story. It's Wild West, yeah. And so the end game of SteamWorld Dig didn't really feel connected to. It. Like I I appreciate that there was reference to characters, but it, it still didn't feel connected. It felt like it was. Just, oh yeah, it was very disjointed. Loose. Yeah, well, no, not, I'd not, not loose, like disjointed. It didn't feel like a cohesive story either. Yeah. That was probably the problem I had. It didn't feel like there was the payoff either. Yeah, no, I can understand that. Um, I guess the whole thing about SteamWorld Dig, though, is it's mostly it's just driven by its gameplay. Um, mm. 
so what do we think of the general kind of gameplay loop within the game? Because there is a very kind of repetitious sort of loop that you're going to be going through. Yes, there was. Um, <laughs> I just before I let either of you two jump in there, like I quite like the loop. No, no, like I quite like the loop, but I would I would suggest that it perhaps went on a little too long. Um. Well, that's the thing. So, to, for me to break it down, um, this game was very much for me a hybrid of Metroid and Terraria. Yeah. That's that's how I felt this game worked. There was there was very little limitation on how you approached just digging. You just you just went down. You just, yeah, you know the yeah. goal is go as far so, south as possible, so yeah. you just keep Yeah, that's the thing. Um, there was, it was pretty limited in terms of your horizontal, which Terraria obviously has a lot more of. And with Metroid, there was a, there was a progression of items that allowed you to you know, move around your caves in different ways. Um, I felt like, unfortunately, it was inferior to both of those games in each of its ways. Um, it didn't do the Metroidvania justice, like the, the game style, and it didn't do the sort of free... Look, it's, it's not like Minecraft. Minecraft is sad. For me, Minecraft is sandbox. Yeah. Minecraft for me is construction. Mm -hmm. But whereas for me, Terraria is more exploration yeah. than Minecraft, because in, in, in Minecraft, from again, my experience, it's just, like, if you explore too much, it's just death. Whereas... Um, Death and like the destruction of all of the things you have worked for. Or is it Terraria? It's very much not like that. It's 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 similar to Shovel Knight, where you drop your loot, or we'll drop some of your loot, um, and you can go back and you can get it, and it will just always be there. It's not even the the Dark Soulsy type thing where it will disappear on upon su uh, successive deaths. It's just like yeah. you drop some drop some coin, and then but you can like deposit your money in like a chest and be totally fine. Yeah, you don't actually have to carry money with you. So um, it's yeah, it's very much about the sort of exploration, which there was a little bit of Steam World Dig. It was it wasn't fully fleshed out. No, there was like it didn't like past a certain point. It felt I felt funnel, which is not like it, it's the opposite. Um, which I guess what does that mean? Terraria's trumpet, I don't know. But um, <laughs> basically, that's yeah, uh, that's that's what it, what it felt like on the Metroidvania side. This is actually a franchise that's very near and dear to my heart and it didn't take advantage of it I would say at all um, you feel like it will at the start when you get the sort of the, the first ability which is a, a sprint ability which allows you to gain um, access to areas both further away and higher up yeah um, you can perform in very little space doesn't take any resources and then uh, the next one you get is a high jump which consumes a resource which was a little less fun, but still in the same vein. But moving from there, it it didn't. Like yeah, I only think the the different tools or abilities you got along the way were really not designed so much in the Metroidvania sort of way that allowed you access to other previously well, inaccessible areas. But I, more I mean, it did. about like you, you think of say the drill, for example. Oh yeah, there was there was elements where that there, there was a few key items that would allow you to dig through certain sorts. This of this this game is definitely based on a Metroidvania framework. I, I can guarantee you that. Yeah, and, but then at the same time, I felt like the only way they really wanted you to use the items was in the event that you kind of dug yourself into a into a hole. Um, like you, well, got, you basically kind of got yourself trapped, and then you could use that high jump or combination of your different tools to that manufacture it, a way out. That part of it was a puzzle game because there is actually a like a self destruct option in this in the pause menu. So if you do get trapped, it's like trying to get you to do the whole. You know, Dark Soulsy. Yeah, know, maybe, that, maybe that's, your that's why. I guess maybe the elements of that is then down to how you want to play it. Because I personally sure. refuse to use the self destruct option, so I was well in in the caves. I like to think meticulous, not planning out my kind of plan of attack, looking ahead, seeing okay, there's this, this, and this, which so I'll navigate this way so that I don't get myself trapped. And oh sure, stuck. like in, in, so in, use the, in the out of mind, in the, in the out of mind, yes, um, because there's actually no penalty. Um, in, in the in the uh, sorry in the Adamite there is a penalty. You have to pay, uh, I think it's fifty percent of however however much money you're pulling yeah. at the moment, and you drop all of your currently acquired ore, which is basically like your loot. Yeah. yeah. Um, in the little it's like the internal caves, like the little puzzle rooms, you can actually self destruct for free. Yeah. So um, 
I just did that until I like solved the puzzle. That was it, done. So for me, I, I like I walked over this game in not a very lengthy amount of time. Look, the other the other issue I had was that the the digging, similar to Terraria, but worse I felt was boring. There, there, it took too many pick strikes to break a single block, um, so you really had to be focusing on that. I like it was only when sort of as the game went on, and I'm like, all other items, like I'll buy the items that reduce the amount of uh, water that I consume, which is the you know what yeah. you consume for the high jump and so on and so forth. Um, I'll buy that, and then I'm just going to funnel all of my money into my pickaxe. And that was the only thing that made the game semi-enjoyable because for me, it was too much of a time sink. It, like one block was too much of a time sink. And if you dig that block, then you're like, ah, oh, shit, I shouldn't have done that. It's just like, cool, I've wasted the last five minutes picking away at one block. I mean, five minutes is, is a huge exaggeration. Yeah. Um, it was, it's, it's maybe about a minute per block, which is still far too long. Okay, yeah, no, we never really found that. Um, it will, if you get... So that might have been the way so I was upgrading my stuff in my case, so I just... Perhaps, perhaps. Because um, I was trying to sort of spread myself out across my, um, like, gear that I was buying, and it didn't really, like, it just didn't work. Like, when I start just putting money only into the digging implements, and then the other stuff later, I'm just trying to, like, get good in terms of not dying and such, um, which I was also able to use as offense. So I just kill enemies, hope they drop health, uh, if they don't go in a cave, come out, kill the enemy, so if they drop health, and then just down. And that was the only way that the game I was able to like make proper progress that felt like meaningful. Otherwise, it was just too slow for me. Damo? Um, so the loot. One thing about loot that annoyed me was your fuel. Having to go back up to the top to... Oh, you mean the... Get the sunlight back in here oh, to yeah, yeah. refuel you. Because, like, that as time serious. goes on, like, your shadow, like, the shadow around the map just gets smaller and smaller. So you can't see as far. And, like, look, did it necessarily mean it's bad that you can't see in front of you? Kind of like Fog of War, right? Really. Yeah, but you can't see Jesus. any of the gem, any of the, yeah. like, gems. Like, yeah, yeah, you can't see what, what any kind of block is. You can't see if it's on the an enemy there. Yeah. Um, uh, you can see... The faintest kind of... Yeah, no, no, no. So active enemies you can see because they've got like glowing eyes or whatever. Um, but yeah, there are some enemies that are encased in rock that if you get near them or make sound, they'll break out, uh, which can sometimes cause chain reactions that'll just fuck you completely. Well, it, it can ruin some of the best laid plans. Yeah, absolutely. How you're structuring a yeah. particular dig. Like, um, digging up is almost a no go. So Until extremely late game, you cannot dig up more than one square, which means you are. Like, make sure you dig horizontally and down. Horizontally and down. Yeah. If you're intending on going down, always also dig one block horizontally, because that way you can still branch out again. Stay on your way down. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, Damo, continue. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, sorry. <laughs> I'm just, if anyone wants to play it, trust me, that tip will, yeah, yeah. will save you a He's lot of time and so backtracking. And... and I mean, like, not that you're getting the pixel perfect, but like... If you stay right on the edge, you can always get that like one block that's not directly above you. Like you can yeah. get that yes. slight thing. Yeah, like and that well, like, I didn't find out. And you can also get chance. across one. Like you can, yeah. You know, just because you're just that little bit out of your normal range, your reach, your reach goes the distance. Yeah. So long as you don't have to step. The old Mario like back foot only on the platform. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, like the ladders. The ladders, like, because I used them at the start because I was like, oh, you know, that obviously will be handy. And, like, they didn't say that if you're at the top of the ladder, like, if you're on the ladder, you can't do anything. So, like, you should always just, like, place a ladder, go up, and, like, it works as a platform so you can dig and then you can use another ladder to get up. Yeah. To the, and, like, it took me a little while to figure that out. Like, I kind of liked the approach that they didn't, like, give you a tutorial. Oh, they yeah. just kind of, like, chuck you in. But at that same point... Because it was so little of it, some of those things could have been better. Like things like when I got the drill, the items a little better. Yeah, like, I don't think that is required as part of a tutorial, especially again when you've got a Metroidvania setting. Yeah, you, you don't necessarily need to explain all the facets of an ability, 
but give the player the basics of an ability. Yeah, or even... I, like, I didn't know you couldn't pick that ladders back up again. I didn't I thought, know that either. Yeah, I thought you, would be, you were able to, like, place one, use it, and then pick it back up. And then, like, you had, like, a certain amount of uses for that ladder or something oh, like okay. that. That's why I thought there was a number there. It's like, yeah. okay, you buy a ladder, kind of like you would, you know, acquire it in, like, Legend of Zelda. Yeah. You get a ladder, and then you can then... But it's more like... It's, use it again. Yeah, yeah, but it's yeah. more like the Spelunky, like, throw off the rope type deal. Yeah. But it doesn't go far at all. Yeah. Like, it's just, like, it's a one square height. So I found myself in a large... Is that all the way it was? One square. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I found nice myself... I didn't use them, so... Yeah, no. They're, they're, they're definitely useful if you get yourself... Especially lower down. Um, I actually, some of the time, I use them as guideposts. Um, especially in the lower down section where there's reforming. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, because, like, I, I had a very specific path, but that path is obscured by the fact that it kind of reclaims yeah. itself. Yes, and, and the torches break if you dig underneath them, whereas I don't know if the ladders do. I think they no. might just drop down. Yeah. Um, so they were, they were good to use as, like, guideposts, sort of, when I wanted to... If I had no light left... Yeah. Like, you can you can see, like, the little stripes. Yeah. Like and, I mean, that. yeah, just back, back to the loop. Like, at the start, it was okay. Um, just more upgrades to, I don't know, let your fuel burn longer would have been nice. Yeah. Like, it was, like, 60 se second periods. And it costs an arm and a leg to get. It was like, well, what's the point? Like, you can buy a lantern, but a lantern doesn't refuel you. Like, I thought that would have been a nice thing. So, like, the, the constant having to go around... Like, you know, through your mine or using a teleporter. It, it, it kind of got a bit much by the second section of the game. Yeah. Oh, teleporters. Speak of an item that is not good. Like, that's the thing. Like, I bought two of those in the game and I felt hamstrung for doing it and ended up placing them in really poor locations because uh -huh. there was, uh, there was, it turns out, there was another teleporter nearby that was obscured. Yep. Um, did not show up on the map like you probably should. Because um, the one you place immediately is on the map, yeah. you actually have to uncover it, the other one, which I, I don't know, wasn't a big fan of, because they, they show you the caves on the map from a distance, like, you know, your next cave yeah, is yeah, that, to that one, no, they, was... they should show up that the, the, there's a teleport near there, because they, they consume a different currency that you do not get very much of early to mid game. You only get a large portion of it late game. Those gem yes, sort of the, the little orb things, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, so those those, Next time, Jack, <laughs> those were not common, and that's the thing. And they cost like three of those orbs each, which is one whole drop. The the teleporters, I mean. Yeah. And I found myself late game being like, I can't buy these abilities because these things because it's not a random dungeon. Again, like a like a Minecraft or a Terraria, these are placed in fixed locations. There is a finite amount of this resource. And you have a consumable one-time use item that consumes this resource that you've not described how it works to me as a player. Yeah. So I've burnt some of this resource. Yeah. That it now means I cannot buy these upgrades. For me, that was a that was a real annoyance for me. Um, because like they do put, I think they put one teleporter per world, uh, of which there's about like four at the worlds through each. Yeah. I think it's closer to further down than that one. It's like the second ability you get per like biome, I guess, if you want to call it that. Um, and, yeah, that was the thing. And I'm like, well, by the time I got towards that sort of area, I'm like, I'm real far down now. It's a real pain to have to get back up again. I want you know, instant gratification to cash my money in, to get my lighter back again. I guess I'll <laughs> drop one here, two inches down. Oh, good. I found... One for free. That's real annoying. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that was that was unpleasant. I mean, a lot of a lot of that might come down to playstyles because it sounds like the way that you two both kind of played the game was then vastly different to the way I did. And, and like I said, even in terms of just how I would kind of stagger myself down and gradually do it just from the get go. So I, I didn't run into too many of those issues with the ladders. I didn't run into uh, that sort of issue with the the teleports and that sort of thing because I always had an easy way to get around. So I knew that, uh, once I kind of caught with the first one back in the very first mine. Um, I knew what to expect, and that it was eventually like in each little what we call them, biome or whatever. Um, what, like a, whatever yeah, area, area they are, they each next area. I knew there was one coming up, and I just kind of waited out. And then when I found, I'd got either got myself into an area that I couldn't get myself out of, 
which I only did, I think, on one occasion. And then, um, or it's just I got into a particularly challenging area or I knew that I was going to need to come back to the spot a bit, well, then I'd throw one down and then I'd use that as a teleport spot. Like it was, yeah. So for me, it became more just a strategic sort of thing rather than oh, yeah, totally. uh, a bailout only to go, oh, there was one. Well, it, so for me, it wasn't it wasn't a bailout. It was definitely that that circumstance was like I've I've gone down a long way. And I won't lie; like it was hand, it would have been handy to know. Hey, there's one this far yeah, further down than where I currently stand. Yeah, exactly. Because I mean, it just saves you from burning a resource. And it, like, because if you were like, there's there's no map button at all. No. That is a huge oversight. Being able to look at how far you've gone down, even if it's just like a measurement, like a, like sort of like a spelunking like on each level, it tells you. Yeah, absolutely. It tells you like how far down you've gone. Maybe there was some, was there something on the dual screen for that, perhaps? Oh, on the, uh, on the DS? Yeah, I don't know. Um, I was Vita, so. Okay, because I think perhaps on the DS, maybe there was something for that. Um, there might have been. The games were originally released on Wii U and yes. 3DS originally. Right. Yeah. It's a good question for you. You know on the minimap, you have, yeah. like it's got... You know, as you're going down, like you know, it's got the different lines saying that you know there's yeah. Like, yeah. What the hell was that? Like so it's that because was, it had like X one, then like yeah. X four, and so then it would go was, down to X two. Oh like, yeah, yeah. It didn't explain it, but that was how like the rock in that area, how many upgrades you needed on your so you pick or drill. Because if you uh, so if you go back and play it, if you like swap between your different digging implements, yeah, you'll see that that changes. So it'll tell you yeah what what level. Um, so yeah, so how many how many hits it would take to get through? Right. Right. I can't. Yeah, I can't remember if it was stock standard stuff. Yeah, yeah, I can't yeah. yeah. How, yeah. Many, how many like hits you had to do, yeah. or how many upgrades you needed to be able to actually dig through that surface? Oh, okay. Um, I don't know. It, it probably was how many like hits per block. Yeah. Because um, I loved it when like you got to the point where you're just like, oh, just, that's what I'm saying. One pass will grow. Yeah. Yeah, just the yeah, just the one hit, one break type deal. Yeah, and I reckon the elements of that is then yeah, just how, how you chose to divide resources and like upgrade those sort of things. Yeah, I just, I just did the old. Thing. Thing. But again, yeah, that's I'm, that's the thing. I like burnt a lot. I put my time into, so I was just smashing through these things. One hit, two hits, maybe through. That would have been real nice. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then I kind of piled into. Like I was happy to go. Okay, I'll cut my losses. I'll start making my way back up the top. Get my water and sunlight. But down I go again. Yeah, um, with the water, there were actually... It can be a bit tedious, I guess, especially if you're playing it the way I chose to there, because I hadn't put many upgrades into getting that straightened up, so I was, I was knocked out as much as I can. I'm hurtling back up um, to get the you know, top up my resources, and then down I go again, which would have extended my playtime. So I found a way to sort of jury-rig it with water, how there are a few locations where there was a water... A, like a very small water resource yeah, a cool water there near a cave. Yeah. If you jump into that water resource, get your get your water, go into the cave, come back out again, it will respawn. Yeah. So once I had a, a longer bar, that's how I would sort of cheat it. So that I did, yeah. yeah. Um, but that's the thing. Like things like that would be better to show on the map. Having a more detailed map would have made that game more enjoyable because it would have given me. Something to look forward to, and I again I wouldn't have burnt that resource, which made upgrading a real chore, and and in some cases made it impossible until really late game. By which point it was like, well, no, I've either got I've, yeah, I've either got better abilities or it yeah, I'm just like, well, whatever, I'll just like burn through to the end, just I'll just like brute force it till I finish. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Um, Probably could have done with more bosses. There is yeah, there one. Was, there's one at the very end, and it, that was it, and it was not. It wasn't exceptional either. It no, was it was a little not. bit on the tedious side, but oh, uh, was it? It was rule of three. Like it was not, not tough. Um, I like bowled over on the first crack. I didn't have any trouble with it at all. But um, again, by that point, like I was just flooded with resources because I just hadn't, like especially my money. My money was huge. Because most of the upgrades I wanted were based on that orb that were left. Yeah. So it was like, well, I've got all this money and nothing to do with it. With the ladder cost me five bucks, and I'm raking in a thousand bucks at a time. Like whatever, and then you just get this huge abundance of these orbs, and it's just like, cool, I've got all the upgrades now, and I'm at the end of the game, and the game's over. Yeah. So all right, look, 
I was actually, that's the thing. So this sounds all very negative. I would actually like to point out that I was actually thinking about this really heavily the other day. This would probably be a really good DS game. This would be great as a 3DS game. I actually think because the 3DS or the DS, or was it DSi where or was it 3DS? No, it was 3DS. 3DS, yeah, okay. It's 2013 um, game or 2012, 2013. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I, don't, I was going to say, I don't remember it being quite that old, but um, the idea behind the DS or 3DS is that it is, you want to have your console on almost yeah. all the time. That's the idea, because they want, you know, your street pass and all that yeah. sort of bullshit. So having that, where it's like, all right, well, maybe I'll go down a couple a couple layers, maybe I'll dig out some, dig out some dirt here and there. Like if, if that's how I used my 3DS and I had this game, it'd be great. If I had like a 20 minute bus trip and my 3DS was in my backpack or whatever and I just whipped it out, opened it up, cracked out some dirt, cashed in some money, went back to the, went back to the surface, got all my resources, cashed in my money, yeah. teleported back down, closed the lid, put it back in my bag. That turnaround goes from being tedious to being just a cycle of what I do every time I open my 3DS. Mm. So it's the same as like whipping your phone out, checking your Facebook messages, notifications, text messages, yeah. whatever. It's that cycle of I have a few spare minutes, I'll do that thing. Let's make a little bit of progress. Yeah, That's right. Well. So I was thinking about that. It probably is catered to that a lot. Yeah, and it can work that way. Like it was originally released on the 3DS. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if it... August, August 2013 was, it was initially just 3DS, that's yeah, it. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. And I, it didn't make it. its way to PC till December of that year, and then the consoles from 2014 onwards. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I remember that because I remember watching the the trailer for it and being like, ah, oh, Metroidvania, yes, yeah, that's interesting. Because um, I do keep an eye out for those sorts of games. So um, that was what I was thinking. What, what are your guys' opinions on that, per se? Like, playing what you did and knowing what the cycle of that game is. If you, I don't know how you guys use a 3DS. I know you've both got one. Um, I don't know how you guys use it, but let's say you were using it in the very, like, always on and flip it open to, to burn some time. How do you think the game would have fared in that very in specific... More bite size sort In of that very specific bubble. Yeah, no, it could have worked very well. Like, yeah. to be able to smash out a few minutes, knock down a level or something within, the, uh, within a cave or whatever, and then pop it away and resume daily proceedings... Yeah, it could have, could have worked very well. Like, how, how did you guys both play it? Was it pretty much just a solid session? or Yeah, for the most part. I played uh, over, across two sessions. Um, my second session was the longer of the two, uh, where I spent about three or four hours. I just burnt into it. Yeah, so you, the game did feel like a bit of a time filler for me. Like, so um, I spent it playing it and like even though I, I really did enjoy the soundtrack, like I actually bought DLC for the soundtrack because I do enjoy when Steam allows that shit to happen, and um, I was like, cool, but I'm actually going to listen to Spotify, my Discover playlist, and while I'm playing this, you know, if I like any song, I'll just alt-tab and add it to my other playlist, my yeah. thing. And it was good, like, because, me, honestly, I haven't played a, a time filler in a while, and, you know, it, it's good for doing that, if that makes sense. Like, if you were just sitting at home, and you're like... Oh, what can I play? I've got like, you know, 20 minutes before I'm going to go. It's okay to chuck on. Yeah. Like, I'm not saying like, you know, think like, cause it loads pretty fast. It's, you know, you don't, you're not building, you know, you're not doing construction. Like, you know, you might've missed something. So, you, you know, you might go revisit the cave and be like, oh, cool. Look, an extra $5 worth of. But do you think of linear experience compared to say again, like a Terraria or. Well, definitely, um, definitely. Because I mean, you can just spawn a world in Terraria and just go. And that does, that takes like a minute, two minutes anyway. Yeah. Spawn in a world and you're just like, eh, I'll just dig, far, dig as far down as I can, see what pulls oh, and then bail. Definitely, definitely. Um, but, like, if you wanted something a bit more just, I don't know, a bit more, not mine, I <laughs> think that sounds really poor. Um, but if you just want something more, very it, simple, like yeah. just... You know, kind of like if you were fishing in Legend of Zelda and you were just like dropping, like old school fishing from it's like uh, Link's Awakening, you, you just drop the thing and then pick it up, like kind of a thing. Yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. 
I look for me. I feel like the the whole repetition side of it is like while I'm playing this game, I'm only going to play it in the bytes, the bite size. That like I, I'll structure the bite size portions where it is, you know, that sort of cycle of like okay, start at the top, go down, make some progress, get some ore, go until my resources are spent, and then bail, and then that's that's Your my session. play. That's my play session. Um, that I think would be the ideal sort of way to play this game. I, I didn't play it that way, which and it, and it definitely showed after a while because I'm just like, oh yeah, mine was like a solid kind of six to eight hour block on a plane. Mm. So, yeah. So, did you have any other questions? Like, I mean, we we kind of might have cycled through. And I, like you start talking about the audio, uh, like the the soundtrack there, and I I agree that it was quite good. Yeah. Um, like the premises of the game is really cool. Like Steam World Dig. Like it's not very often that you have robots that are a bit steam powered. You know what I mean? Like running on lanterns and things like that. Like I'd like to see an expanded universe of this. Like, well, there is. There is. So this was a sequel yeah, to World. a DSiWare game that was Steam World Tower Defense, I think it was. And then um, there's the Steam World Heist, which is the newest game. Coming up, or is it it's, out? it's already out on Nintendo platforms, but it's not. Yet available for the, the rest. Uh, I'm sure that's part of their plan I'm at sure. the moment. But um, I'm sure they probably probably play like received a lot of money through Steam sales and such. I yeah. Mean, um, this game is one of those ones where you know, pick it up cheap on a Steam sale and you're like, a, like a, just a bucket load of cash. Yeah. Um, visually, I think it, yeah, I think it looked good. Um, yeah, I like the aesthetic, like distinct colours, and then yeah, the kind of the Steamwell style. And you're talking about how they require lands, and it's kind of got a westerny feel as well. Yeah, like I, it's it's really well yeah. done on that front. Yeah, yeah, uh, the the character design was good. Um, they definitely were able to make robots that very much encompass the cliches of sort of wild, yeah, yeah, wild yeah. I think that, that, that was that really like clever. The, that the large Texan with the like the giant gold <laughs> tooth yeah. and the, the tooth next to it missing, and the you know, and the way that you sort of beeped and buzzed in somewhat of a I don't know Texan yeah, style, yeah, like, that, like an oil baron type. The saloon, like yeah, that you're like you kind of like ah, the lady. Like, you know, yeah. like insinuating, I know, I, know like, this, I know what this means. Well, your yeah. uncle, your uncle used to visit here quite a fair bit and things like that. It's like, <laughs> you know, yeah. the hand up a bit. Cut to that gift of, of like, sort of, yeah. um, Grandpa Simpson walking in and out of the, <laughs> <laughs> the burlesque house. You know, like, I really like the game's kind of sense of humour. It was happy to kind of poke fun at itself as well as a lot of, you know, the things it was inspired by. Um, I would have liked to see more of the town being fleshed out. It was very... Yeah, like, it was just a very simplistic sort of progression. Even, even if it was like walking into a room like you would the cage just to talk to that person, it would have been nice to like make the town feel a little more organic, but just everyone's just out on the street all the yeah. time, you know. Here, here, partake of my wares, I'm outside my building that you just built for me. A water fountain in the town would have been nice too. Yeah, yes, because there is actually, your water does not regenerate when you return to the surface. Mm. Um, so yeah. Agreed, but that may have broken the the resource management side. Yeah, things. because you do sort of have to find those little reservoirs in. Yeah. Again, I I like memorized caves that had other water in them or water near them. Yeah. Oh well, like the second world for me and... had one like straight to the right. As soon as you entered it, yeah. straight to the right, there was a pool there. And it was like out back in like. Yeah, that's totally it. Yeah, yeah. yeah so and that, that was a thing which I felt. Was probably to the game's discredit that you would you ended up having to break its system of, you know, like you, you sort of Castlevania where it's like, oh, okay, I'm in a room now, all the enemies are respawned. Yeah. I leave the room, come back in, oh, look, they're all back again. Surprise! Like, yeah. like that. So you having the resource to do that as well, which I mean, you would need to do. Having to just go completely go forever means that you're not going to want to explore. Yeah. So I don't really know how else to sort of manage that, but um, yeah, I don't know. I. Like, that's the thing. I felt like I was cheating the game system, so <laughs> like just to save time because it was stealing some of mine away. You know, yeah. so it was. It felt like it, we were just stealing from each other, part of it. You know, give and take. Yeah. Uh, well, take, 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 and take, take, and take, take and take. Yeah, yeah take and take back. Yeah. Um, yeah. Look, uh, there, I mean, there are plenty of things and deficiencies in the game there that have kind of been highlighted. There's, uh, we've also mentioned a number of good things within the game as well. Oh, absolutely. There's, um, there's definitely promise there. It's not 
and it's not just an out and out like I think, wash out. Well, I think what kind of keeps coming up through a number of the different elements that we've spoken about is really down to kind of how you play the game. So, like your different approach to it. So, a solid session or you know, two or three sessions is probably not the right way to play it. Yeah, agree. And that was what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Bite size kind of. Oh, I ran 15 minutes. I'm done. Put it away. Come back to it next day or later on the day, what, you know, whatever that ends up looking like, um, and knock out a little bit of time too. Like that's a perfectly good way of playing it. That's perhaps sure. not going to exhaust you either. Absolutely, you're not going to get that sort of. Um, I can't think of the right word, but basically, it's not just going to get to the point where it's like, oh, it's not going to get fatigued by it. Fatigue is the exact word I was looking for. Thank you. Um, I yeah, yeah. I, and look, for all we know, it was designed that way because it yeah. came out only on. The the three three years. Years. Yeah. So for all we know, it was built for that platform. And again, th- there might have, and I, I do remember maybe there being something to do with the second screen um, with potentially like a map of some description. That may have been how that was built originally. Yeah. Which again, that would have made perfect sense and would have made that game much more enjoyable. And even if it wasn't a detailed map, even if it was just the same little mini map pushed down to the, uh, the next screen, yeah, that's fine because it's in your face and seeing... You know what you've done, how far you've gone. Um, so for me, yeah, I, I think perhaps that was how the game was designed. And if so, then it's probably to the game's discredit that it's on so many other platforms. Yeah, it might have been better just sticking to what it yeah. was on. But yeah, developers need money. Who knows? Oh, of course, of course. And look, who, I mean, you spread the love. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, Steam makes it very easy to you know move your game from other platforms to it. Yeah. Um, as does you know Nintendo with the 3DS and the yeah. uh, Wii U, and of course Sony with Sony that cross and Sony are pretty happy to take you on board. And yeah, yeah. as of Sony, they like they've released it simultaneously across all three of yeah. their platforms. So, so yeah, um, they probably would have done some some extra help to the developers there. So yeah, it's yeah. Look, I, I would say it's to the game's discredit probably because of the the cycle or the, the, the cyclical nature of the game, but. By the same token, like it, yeah, it does. It gets the game out there, and it gets the, the franchise out there, which yeah. you know we've talked about there being a franchise for it. Yeah, um, and it is definitely recognisable because of its style. So, who knows? Who knows? All right. Well, we might kind of wind things down from there. So, if you want to pick up Steam World Dig, you can pick it up on pretty much every conceivable platform. So, it's on the 3DS, the Wii U. PS3, PS4, PS Vita, PC, Xbox One, not the 360. Um, but depends uh, on the original Xbox. Yeah, we're, we're, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, just misses the 360. Dreamcast, <laughs> um, Master System 2, <laughs> yeah, Super the Nintendo. Original Game Boy, the brick. Yeah. I'm um, sure there's even a Game Watch version of it. Atari <laughs> Lynx, uh, 2600. Uh, Commodore uh, does not support Steam LD. Um, there was a dispute. We won't go into that. Uh, <laughs> You should probably wrap this up, not me. Yeah. yeah. No, we'll, we'll leave it. So again, all the platforms that I listed and not the ones he listed are places you can actually pick up Steam World Dig if you so choose. But otherwise, that's about all we have to say. There. Any final points at all? Um, bring it on. Like, bring on the next Steam World. Steam and I've been, I've been opened up into the world. Would love to play more to see what they've got to offer. It was enjoyable for what it was. I mean, I wouldn't go out and, you know... Rush to buy it on any other platform. I got it on my Steam, but um, yeah. Would you play it again? Um, not for a while, but yeah, maybe one day. Like if I again, if I needed a time filler and I was just like, God, I just don't want to sit here on my computer and listen to nothing but Spotify. Then yeah, I'd probably play that again. Would you play it? Again? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to play it again, but I might play it in a slightly different way because I mean, you can, like we've kind of established, you can get totally different types of experiences just based on the way that you play the game and. Yeah, maybe a you know smaller segmented sort of play uh, play style would have changed my perception a little bit. I, I don't know. I mean, I still you know quite enjoyed it, but that's why I brought the game this month. So um, yeah, I don't know. It, for me, it, it didn't have that time. Would be my my deciding yeah, factor. Yeah. If I can mm. get back to it, for me, it, it just didn't hold that that Metroidvania that I wanted from it. Um, yeah. it. It teased at it a lot. Like it's like. The way that it's sort of like the, the frequency in which it gives you abilities and that they're useful but they're not amazingly game-breakingly useful is, is good, but um, it just like they didn't do enough to, yeah. to vary the gameplay to make 
you know, abilities that made sense, that gave you a progression, gave you a lot of different skills. Um, like, if you want to make a Metroidvania, go play Metroid, go play Castlevania, Symphony of the Night, go play Axiom Verge even. Yeah. Um, if you are into Metroidvanias and you're looking at this game, maybe take a pass, I would say. Yeah, I mean, there might be there might be something they kind of learned from SteamWorld Dig that they've been going to apply with SteamWorld High. It's not that we're saying just run out and buy it because we haven't had a chance know, to play it ourselves. I don't even know what yeah. that game is. Um, yeah, neither do I. Really, so. <laughs> oh, I'm waiting sure, for it to come another planet. And now it's another tower defense. I don't yeah. actually know. But um, that's what I'm saying. Like, in, in, just in terms of the game type that you're looking for, um, this, is, this is more digging from Terraria than it is like platforming and exploration of say a Metroid game. It does have elements of both, but it is very much more the the laborious digging. So just be aware that that is what you're in for. Not a bad thing, just putting it out there. That, that's no, it always helps, that's what you're after. always helps to be informed in terms of what, uh, Absolutely. To know what you're getting. Uh, because again, some of, the, some of the misconceptions I had may have made the game slightly less enjoyable for me than say the both of you. Yeah. So, just, yeah, doing my due diligence, my, my civic duty for you guys. So, yeah, that was the March entry for the Video Games Club. Um, first up, you can kind of catch us all on different social media platforms, namely Twitter, except for Jay. But, uh, yeah, maybe I should look into that. Get active. I probably uh, You can find Damo at Tacos Talks. Uh, you can find me at Paul James P2. You can also find the site itself on Player2AU. Um, you can hit up the site, player2.net.au, and otherwise there's a range of different shows you can catch up on. So the Video Games Club, there's the two different podcasts the, um, that you can find on various podcast services, as well as uh, our other show that we've started recently, Patched, which yep. you'll find every Tuesday uh, throughout the course of months, so keep your eye out for that as well. Um, Constant patches every every Tuesday. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> look for a patch every Tuesday. Patch. Um, but that's about all we have to say, so until then, we'll see you next month where we're going to be talking about Damo's game, which was... Stone of the Enders, the second runner. So look out for that next month, and until then, we'll see you later.